ports across the U.S. are shut down, including here in Houston, after thousands of port workers went on strike at midnight. This move will cripple the transfer of a wide variety of goods along the entire East and Gulf Coast. Joining us live to talk about how this strike could impact our economy is Margaret Kidd, Supply Chain and Logistics Te Technology Program Director with the University of Houston. Thanks for coming in studio to talk about this. Well, thank you for the invitation. Yeah, so because a lot of people are going to be interested in this now wanting to know how is this going to impact us? Do you think that this is potentially going to impact our nation's economy? Well, on the short term, there's very limited impact, but an extended strike is estimated to cost the economy up to five billion a day. And that's a big number. And when we consider that ports from Brownsville all the way up to Maine closed today, mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of folks that aren't working today, a lot of truck drivers that don't have a load to pick up at the port. Yeah. So, you know, a short, a week, week and a half, we'll be okay. Um, anything beyond that, we're gonna feel some pain. So if they can come to a, an agreement, if they can negotiate and come to a contract agreement soon, within the week, you say, then this shouldn't impact us. But if it goes on longer than that, what are we going to see happen? Are we going to see shortages of things or an increase in uh, cost? What would what would you think would happen? Well, those are great questions. Uh, you know, if this extended to several weeks, as in three or four, um, we would see an impact probably at the grocery store in terms of um, fresh fruits and vegetables. A lot of that's imported from Central America and South America. Our spirits from Europe and cheese from Europe um, would be impacted. Um, I'm optimistic this gets resolved possibly this week. There was some movement in the negotiations late yesterday um, where the U.S. Maritime I, I Alliance offered a 50 percent increase over six years okay. and it was declined but I think they're very close now. Okay so that's that's what makes you so optimistic that it would it would like because they are like coming up with a plan and giving it to them that this would probably get wrapped up quickly. I'm sure they want it to get wrapped up quickly. I, I am not only optimistic, I think we have bigger issues to deal with in the country right after the Hurricane Helene. Um, I think people will be at the table this week and if not by early next week. That's good to hear because, you know, we are already talking about how high grocery grocery store uh, prices are right now. Nobody wants to see their grocery bill go up anymore. And then also with the holidays coming up, I mean, this could potentially impact holiday shopping if it were to go on much longer too. Well, many of the big box retailers, so like your Macy's, your your Home Depots, Office Depots, Ikea, they all front loaded their peak season shipments. So that means they- Because of this? Yeah, in anticipation. So we saw really kind of record volume of containers throughout the US coming in in May, June, and July, um, which normally would have been coming in August, September, October. Oh, so wow. the good news is um, inventories are fairly robust. I have concerns concerns about the small and mid-sized retail retailers um, who don't have the luxury or the lines of credit to pre-order inventory yeah. and hold it for a few months. Yeah, that's a good that's a good uh, a good uh, good point to make. How quickly do you think that uh, we could see something resolved within the week? I, my bet would be before next week. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, yeah. but I, I think <laughs> I think there's some movement and it's in everyone's best interest. Yeah. Do you think this is going hit, to hit certain sectors more than others? If it's short term, no. Um, on the longer term, it really throws a disarray into the whole transportation system, but also manufacturing. So, so many of our manufacturing facilities, especially the auto sector, relies on raw materials and component parts that come from all over the world. Um, so, you know, past a month from now, um, there could be an issue if that strike was still going. But keep in mind, we're in, we have an election in 35 days. Right. I can't imagine this. Um, still being something we're talking about come November 5th. I sure hope not. Um, but for everybody who's just tuning in now or has maybe seen some, um, you know, fear mongering on Facebook about going out and buying things, what do you want people to leave this interview knowing? What would you what would you say to them? Absolutely do not hoard. Um, mm -hmm. It's not that type of calamity. Um, you know, be responsible when you go to the grocery store. If you want to do something, write your, your elected officials in Washington and tell them you'd like to see the strike ended. Yeah.
Yeah, because I think that's I think we've both seen that on social media recently is that people are are starting to get kind of spooked and scared. But there's a danger with, as you put it, hoarding things, too, is that you can you can cause some uh, false supply shortages. Well, exactly. And we saw during COVID people mm -hmm. stock up on water and toilet paper and the grocery shelves were empty or during hurricane season. So we, we can't do that. We've got to be responsible collectively. All right, Margaret Kidd, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? No, thank you for hosting the Supply Chain and Logistics Technology Program, University of Houston. Very good.